Today, we are back on Timu.com to find the fakest tech that money can buy. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Oh man, the low price bargains begin. Look at this. An authentic Japanese samurai sword for cosplay. $3.99. Man, for $4, you can't put a price on aesthetic. Man, we got scammed once again. Look at this. It's not a $3 sword. The display, the wooden stand is $3. This looks kind of sick to match our samurai sword. This is like uh, you go to Japan once and all of a sudden it's your life. Is that you? <laughs> okay, look, like I go to Japan a lot more than once. I'm not that corny. Oh, look at this one. The one in orange for $9.35. We got garb for the video. What other things do they have in this hot sale? Oh, yikes. That's, that's the interrogation outfit right there. 600 megabits dual band USB Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapter. So 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi is like a BMW and a 5.8 gigahertz connection is like a rocket. I love the analogy here. It's uh, yeah, that's a way to simplify it. Luxury plating breathable mesh cooling case for iPhone 15, 14, 13, 12, 11 Pro Max plus men, women, wow. <laughs> Bold. We get all of those? <laughs> Add to cart. High definition infrared night vision telescope for outdoor hunting. Well, I certainly won't go hunting with this. Or outdoor. Or, yeah. The... Grass? Ew. Look at all of the fake night that they have. Fake night fishing, fake hunting, courtyard security. Do you have direction that is larger print? For an old person, this is hard to read and keep up with. What is going on? <laughs> How did you even get on this website? The olds are back at it again, boys. What is going on? Add to cart. Simple fashion, large capacity backpack. Oh my God, look, what, what are, what, what? Erna Feteronerti. This looks like when you have Midjourney generate a name tag for you. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna go just type in a weird shit. <laughs> I got weird Quack. shit, all right? Oh, here we go. Tax these nuts. <laughs> you know what's funny is that I, I could believe he said that. <laughs> Look at the review. It's the second best flag I bought. I love it. <laughs> Tax these nuts. Yo, it's back. The Doyo Gaming Steering Wheel. So this one is 70 bucks, which is, I think, about the amount of money that I'd want to pay for a steering wheel on Timu, if I'm honest. Doyo wouldn't steer me wrong, right? Add to cart. Look at this keyboard. Whoa. All keys without punching. Perfect. I love the sound it makes. Yeah, I, uh, I want this. All right, so we got a bunch of stuff in the cart. Let's go check out, and I'll see you guys when everything shows up. All right, it's been a couple of weeks since we made our order. Let's see what Timu has in store. All right, what we got here? Oh, shit. So this is quite obviously a shirt. Okay, this is, uh, this is interesting. So, uh, the print on this is not the most high quality, I'll say. Oh, actually, this fits quite well. You know what? This is, uh, this is cozy. I would wear this at home where no one can see it. How does it look from the back? Oh my god. That looks, oh my god. Yeah, I'd be embarrassed to step out of the house with this one. Wow, this is awful. What about this? This, my friends, is a sword. Oh, assembly required. <laughs> oh, wh whoa, the cover's actually really high quality, though. That's pretty solid. That's more solid than the actual blade itself. This is this is nowhere near a blade. This is a uh, wait. This might be wood. The blade is wood, but the thing that would be wood to hold your blade is plastic. But that it even makes the whooshy noises. Me pretending like I actually know what I'm doing. We got to put the little middle thing, whatever this is. There we go, look at, ooh. This is the most Asian I've ever looked. There's no waist holster or anything, so I'm just gonna pretend I got one. Take two. I'm Samurai. <laughs> okay, this is a 3D hologram fan. Hologram fan, yeah. 
They spelled that right. Well, first of all, there's instructions in English with, of course, an app that will probably steal my data. What's a few more extra bytes between me and a certain other country? Okay, so this looks like a rather simple piece of kit. It's a PCB with a lot of LEDs, just in case it turns on and cuts my hand. Uh, that, 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 I was scared it was gonna do that. Okay, that's actually kind of sick. It'll tear your hand out though, if you're not careful. Can you hold it? It is kind of scary. It's kind of like holding a little drone in your hand. You don't know what's gonna happen, but. It's gonna count them. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! Look at my little T-Rex! That's the world. That's a burger. Man, what, what is happening right now? <laughs> the idea here is that you can put this on display, maybe in your storefront shop, to show that you do, in fact, have nice looking burgers. Or know your numbers between one and 10. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crazy to me that I'm holding it like this, because it looks like it's just floating in my hand. Look at this. It's like I'm holding it. Dang, that is super cool. So for $32, I wouldn't necessarily go out of my way to buy one, but for the sake of novelty, the fact that you can even buy one on Timu is super cool. Not bad, not bad. All right, next up we have Night Vision. I mean, a product like this seems pretty straightforward. How this works is there's an infrared light on the bottom that'll fill the room in light that only the camera can see, which is really neat. Oh, wow, that is a, whoa. Okay, that's a better screen than I was expecting. Oh, I have to pull my own focus. It's a manual focus lens. Oh, shoot. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a micro SD card set that we also bought from Timu, which is a bit sketch. I know these things are very cheap, but usually what that means is they're lying about the capacity. But for our cheap Chinese night vision camera, it should be okay, right? Micro SD card is in. I guess I'll just start recording, because why not? All right, so this says that it's recording in full HD, 1080p. So right now I'm looking at a clock at the end of the room, and I'm about as focused as I can be using this tiny screen to preview. But let's turn off the lights completely, and let's see if we can properly spectate in the dark. I'm gonna hit the first stage of IR light on this camera to see how much better it'll make out that clock. Ooh. Yeah, you can make out very distinct shapes. This camera's doing a pretty good job. I'm gonna look at Luke. In terms of what we can see on camera, you look very bright. That's because I am. Oh, there you go. All right, so we shot with our Timu night vision goggles, recording on our Timu SD card. Let's see if any of this actually works on a computer. Oh boy, here we go. There's one video and it's AVI. That does look like 1080p though. In terms of frame rate, it's not the best, but in terms of detail, I thought it would be worse. I'm actually kind of impressed. It's pretty good, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's way better than I was expecting, honestly. Dang, I guess cheap cameras have come a long way. The only thing that I wanna test out though is that we have this SD card. I do want to see if it's actually reading as 256 gigs. Oh yeah, it's reading as 256 gigs. The transfer speeds aren't that bad. It took about 10 seconds to transfer a gigabyte file. 10 minutes have gone by transferring footage onto our Timu SD card, and it's not doing as bad as I thought it would be. The file transfer is slowing down a bit. It's not sustaining the speeds that we saw earlier in the file transfer, but that being said, it's still going. Two thousand years later. So our full 58 gigabyte file transferred onto the card, at least in theory, according to Mac OS. But when I try to play the video, the file is pretty unresponsive. In fact, it says that the document could not be opened in QuickTime, which is definitely not true. That's unfortunate, but um, just for good measure, I also transferred the same file from the SD card back to the computer. And I try to play that back, same thing, it won't play on QuickTime. If you're looking to get a 256 gig SD card for something more important, probably don't buy it off Wish, Timu. They might as well be the same website. What do we have here? So we have one, two, and three. These are, it says a lot of things in Chinese, but most importantly, RGB. Oh, it's a macro pad. 
I forgot I ordered this. Oh, that actually feels really high quality. <laughs> it's got an acrylic base with a metal knob that pushes down, but also does knobby things. It also has three buttons with blue switches. Obviously this thing's not artisan, but for 13 bucks, not crazy. If you just wanted to have simple access to macros on your desk. And we have this guy, which appears to be a mouse. Oh, you ready for this? <laughs> Man, this almost looks like a clear magic mouse, only I think it looks way better. And uh, the USB-C port is on the correct side of the mouse. So it has a magnetic acrylic top that you can just take off, which reveals the USB-A dongle and also just the internals of the mouse as well, which just looks really sick. But what about our headphones? The KZ EDX Pro. First impressions, in terms of the look, wow, they actually kind of match our mouse with the see-through vibes. Kind of dig that, wow. I actually kind of like that this universal connector is recessed because that way it's not gonna go anywhere because I've definitely had these things come off on me on other headphones. On my ears, these feel pretty lightweight, though I'm having fitment issues with my left ear specifically, though they do include a bunch of ear tips in the box as well. So I'll play around with these and get full sound impressions. Holy crap. <laughs> That's awesome. The thing that sets these apart, aside from the transparent colorway, is the sound quality in that it is very balanced. It's not super neutral or flat. There is a bit of color there. I like that the bass has a little bit of punch, but it's not overbearing. And the trebles come across very clear and the mids have excellent detail, meaning that the vocals come through very well too. With these, there's a bit of airiness to it, which makes the audio sound a little more open. The vocals are so good too, because I listen to a lot of female vocals especially, and sometimes with headphones, they can pierce a little too high. But with these, I think there's a nice roll off to the highs where female vocals actually sound a bit warm. What a good buy. Wait, how much were these again? $5. Bro, I swear to God, if these are $5, I'm gonna shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, but these things are on Timu. Holy shit. These things were six dollars. <laughs> what? Whoa. Okay. Uh, these might be the best six dollar headphones I've ever tried. <laughs> what the? F huh? I think we scammed Timu. <laughs> All right. So we have a wired mechanical keyboard from Ajas, who we've taken a look at before in another Timu video, and this looks to be a wrist rest. Starting with the wrist rest, this is a full acrylic guy. Wow. So I have one from Nufi Studio, and this honestly looks pretty similar. This looks rather nice and it has really grippy rubber feet on the bottom so your wrists aren't going to push it anywhere, which is nice to see. What about our mechanical keyboard from Ajaz? Comes with pink modifier keycaps, also comes with hot swappable switches. These are looking brown, so they're gonna be tactile. And here is our keyboard. Now this is looking pretty bare bones and basic. It almost kind of looks like the $10 Dell special with the way that that the plastic is, it looks pretty cheap. And honestly, the whole thing is rather light. With our wrist rest, it actually aligns perfectly, which is great. Keyboard actually doesn't sound too bad. So just like I mentioned in the unboxing portion of this video, the keyboard actually sounds decent stock. Now at 40 bucks and with switches that aren't lubed from the factory, there's only so much that you can expect, but all things considered, I think this is built really well. The stabs on our space bar sound pretty decent. There's not a lot of rattle there. And now that I have this keyboard on a desk pad, I think that helps a lot to keep the reverberations down to a minimum. There's nice LED lighting in here. As far as I can tell, it's just white, which is totally fine because that's how I would rock it all the time anyway. And the light does shine through the keys as well. There's some transparency in the letters, so that's cool to see. You also have media buttons up top for easy 
access. But best of all, there's a volume knob. You can turn it left or right to adjust how loud the sound is or push it down for mute. Pretty simple, it's a little thing, but for 40 bucks, I like that a lot. Especially considering the fact that Timu didn't send us the right colorway. I don't exactly remember which one I ordered, but it certainly wasn't plain black. Look at this keyboard, whoa! But it is what it is. Really can't be surprised, honestly. I, in fact, that's usually what we expect out of Timu. It is quite tall, especially when the deck is lifted up and at an angle. It's not the most comfortable typing position, which is why I'm happy that we got this acrylic wrist rest. Not only does it look good on the desk and is actually really high quality. I love how clear that is. There's no scratches or scuffs. It came really nice in the box, but also it elevates our wrists so that typing is way more comfy. So yeah, the acrylic wrist rest is cool, but it also matches our other two peripherals, namely our see-through mouse, which looks awesome. I love that you can see the inside of it completely and it looks super clean. And functionally, this mouse is really solid as well. I think it could be a bit louder in terms of tactility, it sounds pretty muted, and honestly, these mouse clicks are a bit soft for my liking. But as a travel mouse, I think this is acceptable at the very least. And you also have some buttons here. You have DPI adjustments, and there's also a screen button here, which basically minimizes your window. So if you need to mouse around really quickly and hop between apps or close apps very quickly for whatever reason, you have that option. For as nice as this mouse looks, I do have some concerns about how it'll hold up in the long term. With this very glossy plastic, I think this will get scratched up very easily, especially as you start transporting it in your bag with other stuff. That's something to keep in mind if you do find this mouse on Timu and want to pick it up. And lastly, we have our three key macro pad. So this guy was, I think, around $14, and it has three keys that you can map as well as a knob that's completely metal and is also a button. And you can map them to basically anything that you want. Unfortunately, I threw away the box to this thing before I plugged it into my computer and realized that I needed a piece of software to map stuff to the macro pad. So I did some searching online and found one that works and it's actually very straightforward. You have access to a bunch of keyboard keys, modifiers, multimedia controls. You can even control the LEDs on this thing as well, and also mimic mouse functions too. So for example, if I highlight this piece of text off of this article and hit the left button, I go to my notepad over here and hit the right button, it pastes that whole bit of text in. Super simple. If I hit the middle button while text is highlighted, it does a cut. And then if I hit the right button, it'll paste it. Obviously, this is the most rudimentary way to use a three button macro pad, but the takeaway here is that the possibilities are endless and there's a lot of functionality to be had with just a bit of configuring. Next up, we have this fancy looking speaker. It looks like a pretty simple speaker, it just plugs into 3.5 mil headphone jack and is powered by USB. Looks pretty nice. So I'll say that this is not real wood, nor is it particle board. This is just straight up plastic, but the effect is rather nice. I think it's a pretty convincing looking wood, if I do say so myself. It also comes with headphones. They actually look like uh, Apple earpods. Oh yeah, looks like it has a headphone jack and a mic jack as well. So it'll do pass through, presumably if you have this on your desk and your PC set up, you won't have to reach around the back or on top of your PC to plug in headphones. You can do it right from these speakers. It also comes with a microphone, but you know, kind of like those ones that you would use when uh, you're commentating a Madden game, but uh, you just plug it into the headphone jack. Okay, it only made that sound once, so I think I broke something. Yeah, uh, that's not a mic solution. That's not real. We're just gonna, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna pretend that doesn't exist. Reach the sky night core. Oh, so let's play something with bass. We have a Timu speaker. Um, oh, that's epidemic sound. Elvish. Dance music? It's Berlin Nightcore, don't you know? <laughs> it's Berlin. No, it's not on my Spotify year-end rap, I'm trying to say. It's not wood, but it's wood effect. At $38, it was way more than I expected it to be, but uh, it certainly looks cool. It kind of matches our desk here. There's no bass to this, but 
I'm actually surprised at how loud it gets. I think it sounds better when it's actually aiming at you directly. Yeah, of course. Most speakers sound better when they're pointed at your face. Yeah, but I, I'm just surprised at how like fine of a cone it is. <laughs> it's just like, this is good sound, terrible sound, terrible sound. 38 bucks, mm, we can do better. Oh my God, okay. Whoo, whoo. This is the R270 racing wheel that we bought on Timu. So what exactly does a $69 wheel even look like? Okay, so we got our pedals. I'll say that these already look pretty cheap. That brake pedal doesn't have much resistance. Gas pedal, same level of resistance. So that's gonna be fun to differentiate when you're playing a racing game. But most importantly, we have the racing wheel itself. Look at this, okay. I'll say firsthand, the material on the wheel itself is a little weird. So on the top, we have pretty hard plastic, but on the sides, we have soft touch plastic. It almost feels like rubber in some ways. It'll definitely get dirty. I think uh, it's already looking kind of grimy and it is spring loaded. It'll do 270 degrees of total rotation, which is not a lot, but the fact that it is self-centering is maybe good because I doubt this thing has any force feedback whatsoever. And that would at least give you a bit of that sensation just without it being the real thing. It also has a stick on the side, which you can probably use as a sequential shifter, though it does market it on the box as a handbrake. So it could function for both, depending on how you set the macro in your racing game. But yeah, let's uh, jump into a game and see how well this actually plays. Something I wanna find out is if this wheel will work natively with a game like Forza Horizon 5. Ideally, I don't have to do any configuration cause that's annoying. Oh, there's a little bit of vibration going on. Okay, so it's not quite force feedback, but it's vibration like you would get on a controller, which I guess is better than nothing. But okay, this wheel works natively with Forza. There is a little bit of play on the wheel as I also shake the desk. That can actually mess with you negotiating some of your inputs. Not good, less than ideal. Also, the sensitivity of the wheel is not high enough. I can probably set that in the game settings, but look how much I have to turn the wheel to actually get any inputs across. I mean, look how much the car is not turning. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it takes a little bit of getting used to. Let me see if I can change that in the settings. You know what? I think the game thinks that this is a gamepad. So when you're steering the wheel, Force is like, oh, you're moving the joystick left and right, which is why the sensitivity is all kinds of wrong. Okay, so we're shortening the dead zones at the end, which maybe will give us a little bit of a responsive feel. I don't know if that's how that'll exactly work, but uh, there's only one way to find out. Oh yeah, that feels way more direct. And while the wheel end to end is only 270 degrees of rotation, that's honestly fine for most steering inputs in a racing game. If you were doing maybe like Euro Truck Simulator or something, it probably will be less than ideal. Okay, maybe for 60 to 70 bucks, I can live. Would I buy this uh, with my own money? Probably not. <laughs> That one was less about the wheel and more, I can't talk and drive like a maniac at the same time. Yeah, uh, don't buy this wheel. You can do it, just I wouldn't advise it. Okay, yeah, the shifting is pretty good. Ah! The shift is very tactile. Hey, look, I, I beat the game. Hey, there you go. I know, driving. <laughs> yeah, man, this wheel, this wheel ain't it. Though the shifter, that shifter still sounds pretty good, but man, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't buy this wheel. Spend a little more money, get something nicer. But let me know what you think about this item as well as all the other stuff we talked about in this Timu video in the comments below. And otherwise, thanks for watching this video on Denki Channel.